Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so I'm a student, but uh, for the past uh, few months, I've been building uh, this framework that uh, Matthew uh, talked about. So I'm going to give you a few insights. So the first thing I'm going to introduce is why would you want to do deep learning uh, in uh, Rust? What's the point? Well, actually, as you as you know, in deep learning currently, it's kind of split between the C++ libraries that are more low level with, uh, with a very fine grain control and a lot of good performance. And on the other side, you have Python for the high level performances, uh, the high level uh, API, sorry, for the uh, ergonomics and stuff like that. And in Rust, we kind of sit in the middle of that and we can uh, provide good performance, but also high level APIs. So I think that's a, a good idea to try to tackle that problem uh, right now. So we also have good uh, features with Rust that are would be useful for that kind of project. So WebAssembly, that would be very cool to have kind of a web uh, neural network framework, uh, the NoSTD, the, um, the tooling, which is way better in my opinion than in C++ or Python. And maybe we have opportunities with the GPU computing, which is not there yet. Uh, it's not yet super mature, but it could, it could come uh, someday. So why aren't we there yet? Well, actually, uh, the, the main pain points I identified when making this framework is that our current building blocks, so the Tensor APIs, the uh, Data Frames APIs are very uh, airy. So you have to, uh, to handle a lot of uh, uh, small use case. And uh, it's very great that they have such a, um, a fine control to deliver to you. But if you want to make a framework, if you want to uh, master the workflow from A to Z, you better have very high level APIs that handle the, the, the most common use case for you. So that's what I tried to do. My goal with my library wasn't to um, be the most performing or uh, the most uh, compliant library. It was to try to make an experiment, trying to master the workflow from A to Z and try to limit uh, the complexity as much as possible while maintaining the possibility to control uh, precisely what you do. And you're going to, to see that uh, in an example right now. Um, so. Imagine this is a very common use case. Uh, you want to predict the price uh, of, your, of your house. Uh, you have the data of the house and uh, everything, and you want to predict the price. So that's a regression problem. And you can use uh, neural networks for that. So here I've set up a little project with my library. So the first thing I, I added it at the dependency, you may know that. But what's interesting about my framework is that it I try to implement as many features as I can so that I really have coherent APIs from the beginning to the end of the workflow. But I know not everyone wants to do the preprocessing with the neural network framework, for instance. They want to do their own solution, or maybe they don't want some part of it. So what is great with Rust is that we have the compile time features. So we can toggle all of that. So we can toggle data, so we can have the preprocessing. We can also toggle the precision if we want more precision or stuff like that. Uh, because to me, those those kind of settings are more uh, interesting at compile time because they are more global throughout the whole project when you're using a framework and they are not specific to one or two lines of, of code. There's also the uh, backend that you can set up. Uh, currently, we support NDE array. It was presented previously in the other talks. And, uh, and algebra as well. And I tried supporting uh, fire RS. For now, it's not quite high level enough, but I, I'm sure we are going to get there someday. And we have GPU support through uh, RFIR as well, which is something I would like to get rid of because it's C++ and it gives me like faults sometimes. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the code. So first you load the header of your data set so we can get the columns. And how we handle preprocessing is by tagging the columns with what you want to do to them. So if you want to extract, I don't know, the months from the timestamp, you tag the date with uh, that tag, or you want to extract the, the timestamp you want to, uh, I don't know, map some feature that sometimes is equal to zero to some other feature, and you want to add a logarithm or stuff like that. So you can do this in a very declarative, minimal way. Uh, other stuff, you can also declare what uh, some columns are regard regarding the framework. So you have to tell what is the ID, what is the predicted feature. And once you declared what your data set is made of, you can start applying a pipeline. So it's going to look at what you specified here and transform the data. Then when you have done that, you can specify your uh, model. So I'm using a builder pattern, which is a create pattern you can do in Rust in order to have this uh, both minimal optional settings, but add, uh, with a great control at the same time. And it's very autocomplete friendly. So if I just put a dot here, okay, that's, yeah. I see everything I can uh, try to, um, to do on my, um, on my setting, okay. Um, so yeah. 
then we declare k folds and uh, we uh, save everything once in string. So we can look at that. I've made a, a terminal UI, which is optional as well in order to look at what is going on. Um, so I, I think what is great with, with Rust really is the ability to make very high level APIs, very beginner friendly APIs, although it's a very low level language. Um, and to my opinion, that's really the killer feature of Rust. Uh, not its compile time, of course, as you can see right now, but uh, I mean, everyone is very patient. We are doing scientific computing, so we know how to wait for compile times. Um, okay, that's taking longer than I thought. <laughs> Um, what can I talk about while it's compiling? Well, um, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's a pretty simple framework. You have the convolutional uh, neural network that are supported as well, uh, which you can specify in that uh, same syntax. And, um, and yeah, well, it looks like it won't like to run. So we are kind of screwed. Um, actually, what you get at the end when it's uh, it has done the computation and compiled, of course, is um, both the predictions, which I think is important. So if you look at this, we have also the predictions that were added alongside the data. That's optional, of course. And you have the evaluations per each epoch, which is something you would have to do. And all these tiny steps uh, are kind of um, always there in your workflows, in your machine learning workflows. But usually in Rust, I found out they were very long to code and very uh, uh, difficult. So I thought wrapping them was a good idea. Okay, we can see the training now. So this is a, an optional UI you can activate. And on the left, you can see the tasks that are running. It's running very fast right here, but when you're doing convolutional networks, it can be quite slow. So you have to look at it. And on the right, you have the logs. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to, to talk it in the end because it's already time. Well, um, thank you very much for listening to me. If you want uh, to check the framework, I've put a link here for you. And uh, yeah, I'm open during the whole event to discuss with everyone. Thank you very much for listening.